This is our Structures 2 final project. I'm Andrew Bingham. I'm joined by Parker Cagle and Stephen Chaplin. So this assignment required us to design and perform a stress analysis using Patran Nastran on an Earth-Mars interplanetary crew transfer vehicle. So we took our design inspiration from SpaceX's Starship, which uses 1,200 metric tons of propellant and can carry 100 to 120 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit. Our design is going to feature a 10 metric ton payload and use the same 1,200 metric tons of propellant. So we're also going to utilize the SpaceX's Raptor engines, which has an oxidizer to fuel ratio of 3.55. So from that, we can derive the propellant masses of the liquid methane having 266 metric tons and the liquid oxygen having a mass of 933 metric tons. We're also going to utilize a similar design that Starship has, having our liquid oxygen tanks on the bottom, followed by the liquid methane tanks in the middle and the payload on top. So we have five load estimations that our vehicle is going to undergo. And so for our analysis, we chose to estimate the vehicle loads during the max dynamic pressure during takeoff from Earth, because that is whenever the vehicle will be under the most stress. So we assume that our drag is during the max dynamic pressure, which from historical flight data is around 11 kilometers and about Mach 1.1. So our vehicle also has a coefficient of drag of about 0.7. So that gives us a, a drag load of about 3.8 meganewtons, which we're going to apply to apply as a point load to the top of the vehicle. Now the methane tank and the liquid oxygen tanks are also going to have inert loads on them due to the mass of the propellants and the 6G's acceleration that the vehicle is undergoing during this time. But, but by this time in the flight, we've used about 33% of the propellant, so we're going to estimate that the mass of the propellant in the tanks is 66% and then apply the 6G acceleration. The payload is also going to get the 6G acceleration and it was about 10 metric tons. And then the internal tank pressure of each tank is around 5 bar, which is traditionally higher than most rockets. Okay, and then using those estimated loads, we will then estimate set uh, stresses in different sections of the structure. And the two points that we chose to estimate are in the isogrid and in the propellant tanks. And the point of the isogrid we chose to estimate was actually in the cylindrical section of the oxygen tank. And if you look at the uh, isogrid section in the, di the, the, the diagram, it is made up of three beam elements. And the uh, top beam element is actually the one that is estimated to undergo the highest stress because it is taking loading from the structure and from the pressure of the oxygen fuel tank. And this stress is estimated to be 6.485 megapascals. And then that is compared to the critical crippling stress of the isogrid, which is calculated to be 13.2 gigapascals. So it is well below the limit. And the next thing we estimated was stress in the propellant tanks. And we did that at the very bottom of the propellant tank because the force there is actually the pressure from the pressure vessel and the force of the acceleration of the mass of the propellant at 6 Gs. And the maximum stress for both of the propellant tanks is actually in the oxygen tank at 235 megapascals. And this number and the stress estimated in the isogrid were both compared to the yield strength of the 301 stainless steel of 965 megapascals, and they are both well below that limit. As mentioned earlier, our model is based on SpaceX's Starship. The dimensions taken from this design were the 9 meter diameter and the 50 meter height. The other dimensions were taken from the calculated tank sizing and also inferred as the model was constructed. The materials were applied to the SOLIDWORKS model for the use of image rendering, mass properties, and as a backup FEA analysis in case Patran did not run. The dimensions of the rocket are shown here. The one on the left shows that the total height of the rocket is 50 meters, and the secondary payload and uh, propellant tanks area is 38 meters tall. Uh, the one on the right shows the internal dimensions of the rocket, and it can be seen that the fuel tank is above the oxidizer tank. This also shows a detailed view of the isogrid, but it should be noted that this is a, represent, a representation of the isogrid, and the isogrid shown here is 10 times the actual size. 
Okay, and before any actual analysis in PATRAN and NASTRAN can be completed, an isogrid equivalence needs to be reached. And this is because the isogrid as it sits now is way too computationally expensive to actually run. And the way this equivalence was achieved was by running a 1.6 meter by 0.866 meter isogrid section. And this is eight isogrid triangles long and five isogrid triangles high that this was run through PATRAN. And then a panel of the same dimension with varied thicknesses was run in PATRAN and analyzed. And these two things were compared with the panel being having varied thicknesses until a equivalent deformation was achieved between the two panels. And the final panel thickness for the equivalence panel was 12.6 millimeters. And this comes out to be a 99.84% accuracy between the deformations of the two different sections. Once this equivalent skin thickness was calculated, an FEA model was constructed inside PATRAN and then later analyzed inside NASTRAN. The entire rocket model was built, but it was built in separate groups. So the tanks, the nose cone and the payload, and the outer skin could be analyzed and viewed separately. And of course, appropriate material properties and element thicknesses were applied to the meshes of these substructures. Shown here are the results. The left image shows the deformation of the whole entire rocket. The largest deformation was found in the bottom cap of the oxidizer tank, and this was 3.1 or 1.3 centimeters. The maximum stress was also found in the bottom cap of the oxidizer tank, and this had a value of 303 megapascals. That value gives the whole rocket an overall factor of safety of 3.18. Okay, so in conclusion, this high factor of safety means that our vehicle actually exceeded design expectations. So, and it has doubled the actual factor of safety, safety needed, which is 1.5. And one way to remedy the situation is to reduce the mass of some of the structures. And by doing this, it'll increase the performance of our, of our rocket and let it go farther. And in turn, maybe even carry some more payload mass. And different ways of doing this is to reduce the cross-sectional area of the isogrid. You can also lower the skin thickness or lower the propellant tank thickness of the fuel tanks. And that concludes our presentation.